now we're going to tell how we are mapping the perpetual sketch scenario to the different boards and equipment from the genomics testbed. Um, it has two main uh, elements. First, we have this prototyping platform here, which comprises FPGA devices, DSP microprocessors, uh, digital out to analog conversion and uh, analog to digital conversion, and also a uh, control PC. Uh, here you can see uh, a signature of some of the software and grids that we are using to control of these elements. The second key element is this um, channel monitor here, which allows for by real time uh, a standard and custom channel. Uh, models, including static and, and mobility conditions, and of course, uh, it allows us to reproduce the uh, interference conditions uh, that we need for this uh, testing. So now let's see the complete flow from the transmitters to the receivers. Here, first, here in the FPGAs, uh, we have implemented the physical layer of both the macro and femto dominant transmitters. This produces uh, in real time the basement IQ signals which are driving to different uh, DAC devices which are providing the digital conversion then the conversion from digital to analog and this results in two IF signals which are driving these vector signal generators here which are converting the signals to the RF band of interest which in this case is 2.6 GHz the RF signals are then driving the channel generator uh, where we apply, in this case you can see a mobile channel and also we, the, the interference is introduced in, in this step once we have the, <coughs> the channelized signals, the, uh, the signals are entering uh, to the first uh, stage of the receivers, which is the down conversion stage. Here the signals are down converted to uh, IF. At IF stage, we are adding um, flat white noise using the generator here. And finally, we uh, are inserting them back to the ADC uh, boards of, of the prototyping platform. And uh, this uh, puts the baseband signals back to the to the FPGAs where it is implemented the physical layer of both uh, receivers and also the interference management scheme which includes the feedback between the transmitter and receiver. Um, besides all this uh, digital signal processing equipment, we have some control equipment. Um, here you can see a digital oscilloscope where we can see the time domain signals and also this uh, spectrum analyzer where you, we can see the spectrum of the signal and we can see in real time if the interference mitigation scheme is working or not. We will now show you how we are configuring and programming a channel emulator in order to obtain the desired testing conditions of the scenario that was described before. Uh, in this case, our real-time channel emulator is featuring four RF inputs and four RF outputs, and of course, dedicated uh, hardware, processing hardware that is interconnecting these uh, inputs and outputs. For the testing scenario that we are describing, we are using three RF inputs and three RF outputs. Then we have a proprietary sub software that is allowing to define the specific uh, channel that is uh, implemented in, e in each of these processing chains. The first chain uh, will provide the channel response between the macro prestation and the macro user equipment. The second chain uh, is providing the channel between the femto prestation and the femto user equipment. And in the third uh, chain, we are providing the interference, so the channel between the chemical station and the macro user equipment. This implies that the second and third RF inputs are uh, driven by the RF output of the chemical station using an external RF splitter. Similarly, we are combining the third and the first and third uh, RF output of the channel monitor using an external RF combiner in order to provide the downlink signal that will be received by the macro UE. Now, for the macro uh, channel, we are using an extended, extended pedestrian A channel model. For the FEMTO communication, we are using an ITU pedestrian B channel model. And for the interference, we have defined a custom channel which uh, is favoring that the interference is present in a given 10 MHz band. Then, in order to define the, the channel uh, model, we have this editor here where you define the channel input response to the channel basically through the tab. So we put the delay and amplitude of each of one of the, the tabs conforming the channel. We can also define the signal frequency, the central density, and of course the mobile speed of this channel. Once you have the whole scenario described, you can compile 
this model, which will be then um, be produced in real time by the tunnel emulator, for which we have a third uh, graphical user interface where we can control the operation of the tunnel emulator. For instance, we could pose the channel emulator in order to obtain a static channel response. Or uh, if we allow the, the time variant channel to, to be applied, as you can see, we have time mobile channel. Another important parameter that we can control with this GUI is the, the output gain of each of these RF outputs. Uh, by this way, we can control the specific power of the interfering signal. Besides the digital oscilloscope and the spectrum analyzer, another essential tool that we are using is a software that is providing digital signal analyzer functionalities. Uh, this software is called Chipscope Pro. Uh, it embeds within the FPGA uh, some um, logic that allows to buffer and visualize at runtime the internal FPGA signals of interest. In this case, we are using it within the macro UE in order to debug, visualize uh, in real time the functioning of the system and of course as we will see later it allows us to uh, extract uh, performance metrics. In this screen that we are showing you now uh, you can see the values of the correlation of, uh, implemented in the, the three digital signal processing branches that are in jointly implementing the synchronization and interference uh, detection in the macro UE. Um, we can zoom in in order for you to see that um, the, the peak values of this correlation are below the defined thresholds in the main branch and also in the high 10 megahertz brand, band. So this indicates the, the presence of interference in this band. So uh, now I will show you that in real time we can of course refresh uh, the visualization we are still under uh, different conditions. I want to, to, you to, to, to see that we can also see the gain of the AGC and the uh, uh, CFO that is estimated. Uh, this represents the end of a frame. So this will be the, the CFO for the, the, that has been estimated for the incoming frame. We can refresh it again. In this case, as you can see, the interference mitigation has uh, worked properly, so now the uh, correlation values are above the defined threshold, so we know that there is uh, no interference. In the control computer embedded within the prototyping platform, we are running software that is allowing to configure and program at runtime some of the most important parameters that are controlling the behavior of the system. In this screen that you can see here, we can access some FPGA registers and write to them, of course, the values that we want that are controlling the behavior of first the macro UE. Here, for instance, we are setting the values of the correlation thresholds that we have seen before. But we can also control some parameters of the femtobase station. In this case here, we are defining the length in time, in seconds, of the different transmission modes of the femtobase station. In more detail, the femtobase station has two different transmission modes. In the first one, it will ignore the feedback received from the macro UE, hence it will transmit using the whole 20 MHz bandwidth independently of the interference that this might cause. In the second transmission mode, the FemTV station will adapt its transmission according to the feedback received from the macro UE, hence it will avoid interfering the downlink signal of the macro UE. In this, uh, in this configuration that we, we see here, what we are saying is that each three seconds, the FemTV station will switch from one transmission mode to another. As it has been detailed before, we are also using Chipscope Pro in order to extract at runtime performance metrics regarding the macro UE. What you see here is the constellation that is received at the macro UE, which of course will vary according to the perceived mobile channel conditions and interference conditions as well. We also have some software LEDs which are indicating whether the baseline bit error rate performance of the macro UE is being met or not. And we also have some LEDs uh, dedicated to the FemTV station showing which band is used for the transmission. In this case, since the interference is not very high, it's of 16 dB, the, the signal to interference ratio, we see that the FemTO is always using the whole 20 MHz band. And in, besides this, 
what happens is the bitter rate is always met, so there is no need to adapt the frame to transmission. We can see this as well if we visualize at runtime the, the bitter rate curve. What we are doing now is calculating in real time the bitter rate for each received frame, and we are accumulating it for a period of 15 seconds. So as you will see now, the bitter rate is very low and it's always well below the defined threshold. Now what we have done is that we have increased interference power. So now the signal to interference ratio is at 10 dB and we are again recalculating the accumulated bitter rate so you can see the difference. Now, what you can see here is the variation in the transmission mode of the femto when using a static channel. What you see is that there are periods in which the femto base station is adapting its transmission according to the received feedback, so it's not using the band, the 10 MHz band, where it is interfering. So, as you can see in these periods, the bitter rate perceived at the macro UE is well below the defined threshold. In the next period, three second period, what is happening is that the femto base station is ignoring the feedback and is transmitting using the whole 20 MHz bandwidth. Hence what happens is that it's interfering the macro UE and what you, as we can see, the bitter rate is rising above the threshold so it's not meeting its baseline performance. Using the spectrum analyzer, we can easily verify that the interference mitigation scheme is correctly working. Here you can observe how the femto base station is adapting its transmission to avoid interfering the macro UE. The macro UE was reporting interference in the high 10 MHz band. Hence, the femto base station adapts its signal transmission to only use the low 10 MHz band. Additionally, you can observe how each three seconds the femto base station is switching to a different transmission mode. We are now repeating the experiment using different operating conditions. First, we have introduced mobility. So now the channel emulator is considering a low speed around 0 to 2 km per hour for the channel between the macro base station and the macro user equipment, which is still using a extended pedestrian A channel model. Besides this, the interference is now concentrating on the low 10 MHz band. Here, we are again observing the accumulated bit error rate using Chipscope Pro. As you can see now, there are some periods where clearly the femto base station has adapted its transmission in order to not interfere the macro UE downlink signal. Hence, what we see is that the bitter rate is well below the defined threshold. In other cases, clearly, the femto base station has been using the whole 20 MHz band, so it has interfered, causing the bitter rate to grow very far from the defined threshold. But besides this, what we can also observe is that now there is, because of the, of the mobile channel, there is a huge variation in the bitter rate. Still, we can observe these, these periods where the interference mitigation scheme has been working. Now we will we'll update the bitter rate using TikTok so you can see the variations due to the variation of the, of the channel. So again, clearly there are periods where the interference is uh, causing the bitter rate to grow and some other periods where the femto base station is adapting its transmission. Once again, using the spectrum analyzer, we can validate the function of the interference mitigation scheme. In this low mobility configuration of the system, the interference was concentrating on the low 10 MHz band. For this reason, the femto base station resorts to only use the high 10 MHz band whenever interference is detected in the macro UE. We have once again modified the operating conditions of the testing setup. Right now, the channel emulator is configured to provide 
a fully mobile channel realization between the macro base station and the femto base station. This uh, channel is considering a mobile user speed around 3 km per hour and also a signal to interference ratio of 10 dBs. As you can see in the accumulated bitter rate, now it's much more difficult to tell the operation of the interference mitigation scheme. Still, we can see periods where clearly uh, the FEMTOB station is adapting its uh, transmission in order to avoid interference. We can also see some periods during the, the time where the FEMTOB station is using the whole 20 MHz band, where the com a complete frame has been lost because of the interference.